Hi, welcome to Aquatic Ecosystems, and we're going to look at biotic and abiotic factors. We're going to start with abiotic, and abiotic is just fancy for not living. Not living now or hasn't been living in a while. And one of the biggest abiotic factors we have in aquatic is water. Water has a lot of things going on inside of it too, such as salinity. Does it have a lot of salt like the ocean or a little salt like the ponds and lakes around here? pH. pH of 7 is considered neutral. A lot of pH of water systems are falling into 6. 6 means acidified or acidic. Where is it getting that from? Pollution, industry, sulfur dioxide that's in the air. Next thing we look at is temperature. Closer to the equator, it's going to be warmer. Closer to the pool, it's going to be colder. And some systems, like say like Erie, get warm and cold because they're shallow. The shallower the body of water is, the warmer it can get or colder it can get, depending on the temperature. And some things like the ocean, as you start off top, it gets colder as you go down. It's called temperature stratification. The next thing we look at is rocks. And you might think of rocks as hmm, solid pieces of material that are just kind of maybe on the bottom of the ocean floor or river floor. But they're not. They're being dissolved by erosion, water processes. There's a lot of things going on there, breaking those rocks apart. And then those little parts get scattered in the water. And things like iron oxide or even just sediment pollution is going to affect the water system or the quality of the water. Sunlight. Sunlight can only penetrate down so deep inside the water. And sunlight is crucial for photosynthesis. And that is crucial for our producers. And everything else depends on the producers because they want to consume them. Dissolved oxygen. How much dissolved oxygen is in the water? It will determine things like fish, what can live there, because a lot of them just can't come up to the top and take a deep breath. They actually got to get it out of the water itself. Plant nutrients, like to go outside and fertilize your tomatoes in the summer. That fertilizer may end up in the watershed and eventually into the rivers and lakes. And if it's good enough to fertilize your tomatoes, it's also good enough to fertilize the plankton. Turbidity. Turbidity is fancy for cloudiness. If I stand in the water and I look down, can I see my feet or not? And that turbidity may depend on things like plant nutrients. It may depend on things like what kind of sediment is at the bottom of the floor. Then we're going to look at our biotic. Biotic is fancy for living, and we like to use the word living or organisms with that. And there's a ton of living organisms inside the water. Some of the things we like to look at are plankton. Plankton have unique roles in the ecosystems. And one of them is because there's two types. One is a producer, and it will make food for everything else. There's also another type of plankton that are consumers. And plankton is just fancy for things that float around. Fish. We like to go fishing. Well, then you like to go catch trout in the river or maybe sea bass in the ocean. And those fish will change from one aquatic ecosystem to another, depending on all those abiotic factors we just listed on the right. Plants. Plants are another part of producers. We'll have some plants that have their roots actually submerged into the ground and they still have their foliage coming up through the water. We also have types of plants that can float. Benthos. Benthos are fancy for our bottom dwellers. Things are on the very bottom of the floor and they have a very crucial role, role in the rest of the system. And a lot of times they are what we call indicators of whether water quality is good or not good. Decomposers, because if we have all these living stuff inside the water, then they're going to die and something needs to come along and take care of them. Then we have things like our coral and our sponges. 